Research Rabbit is a free tool for mapping and finding literature, and I think it is an incredible tool that every researcher should consider using. It's completely free, and this is what it looks like. So, when you go to the landing page, it looks like this. When you sign in, it can start to get very complicated very quickly. Um, when you first sign in, I think these are the buttons up here that you should pay most attention to. New collection, new category, or import Zotero collection. So, new category um, is, like like a folder for all of your work. So you may have different sort of themes to your research, and I would consider putting each theme into a different category. Or you may be working on a particular paper. I would put that paper in its own category to kind of collect all of the research you're finding together. And then you've got collections. Collections are the sort of like themes that are within um, a particular research field or search area. That will make more sense as we go through it. Um, and ultimately, if you have Zotero, I highly recommend you connect the two because it is very powerful. I'll talk Talk about how to connect it a little bit later on in this video, but it is a really good tool that I think you should use because it's free and free together. Power comes. All right then. So here we are. We under here we've got like new collection. This is uncategorized. That was wrong. So in this panel on the left hand side, we've got uncategorized. That means I haven't put it into any category. And then I've got collections. I've got my papers and Andy OPV papers. Pretty much the same, but you can see that here it's Andy OPV papers. Um, and if we start clicking on these, all sorts of things will happen over here and it will start to get very confusing. The great thing about this as well is that you've got shared with me. I've got no collections in there at the moment because I've got no friends. No friends to share collections. Oh. Anyway, that's not going to put me off because if I click here, my papers, you'll be able to see that I've got all of these in my uh, paper collection and then this pops up. Once you click on something, you've got similar work, earlier work, later work, and it gives you a hint of how many papers it's found um, in those categories. You can also explore people, these authors, suggested authors, linked content, and then you can export the papers. You can make this a public collection. You can create a shareable link if you want to share it with someone who also uses Research Rabbit, for example, a collaborator abroad somewhere else, even in the same sort of group as you. And you can even ask for email updates about this collection, which I really like because it just means that the papers are just sort of like coming to you. You're a basking shark with your mouth wide open and the papers oh, are just getting sucked in through your mouth. Brilliant. So if I've got all of these papers in my collection, you can see that there's 1,477 similar bits of work. Let's click on it and see what happens. Boom. Oh, this is where I think this interface can get a little bit overwhelming because it just starts popping out all over the place, but stay with it because it is powerful. You get this, okay, similar work. You get a list of all of the things and this network graph. This is completely uh, sort of like interactive. You can move it around. Oh, that was bad. I can't, okay, fit all. Down here, fit all. There we are, I've moved it out of screen, but now it's back again. Look, all of this stuff is completely sort of like interactable. I don't know why you would want to do this necessarily, but you can do it. You can also then have labels, first author, last author, and network, or one thing I really like is timeline. This is where it's really powerful because what it does is it tells you um, what was first and what kind of happened afterwards. And as you scroll over this, you can see it starts connecting the papers that are referencing each other, and it's just such a great way to view it. This is where the workflow really sort of like comes uh, into its own where you can just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into this to the point where you can even confuse yourself and your supervisor. Then we can click on these ones and you can see that I've got similar work. I want earlier work or later work. You can also do it with these authors. So let's click on these authors and see what's going on. I'm gonna go back to similar work. You've got this thing and then this thing. I can do better than that. Come on, Stapes. All right, you've got this map here um, and you can download the map. Um, it's just, you know, there's so much going on. So, oh no, I've gone back and I've cleared it. No! no. Okay, let's go again. My papers. Then I want to go uh, similar work and now we're back to where that is. That's the one of the most annoying things about this is that it doesn't sort of save this screen. You do have to click on through it all these times. Nonetheless, 
here we go. We're going to click uh, these authors, suggested authors, link content, so we can also explore. And you can see there we are. We've got Wikipedia stuff. We've got news feeds. This isn't super interesting for us if we're looking at it from a pure literature perspective. But if you're starting in the early stages of a research field, this linked content may just allow you to sort of explore your field a bit more deeply than just the peer-reviewed literature. Um, and then you can see we've run out of options and things to do. In my papers section, if you click on my papers, you also get a little pop-up talking about the paper itself. Then you can add PDFs. Uh, this has got no PDF. But um, yeah, that is how you explore it. Let's see how we can add stuff. Okay, so here, I like this one. Then it's popped up here and You've got all of the authors, that's what they're called. You've got the title where you can click and you can go find it based on its DOI. But also then, because you've clicked on a paper, you can also say, add it to my papers, add it to another collection, and then you can explore it. So you can add stuff. I'm gonna add it to my papers, and then you can see added one paper to my papers, and that has turned green wherever it is in here. So overall, um, that is how I would use this to just explore. Now, here's one of the most important things that you should know about, and that is how to connect Research Rabbit, which is free, with Zotero, which is free, and make this a really easy way to not only find the stuff, but capture and then reference that research later on when you're writing a thesis or when you're writing a literature review. So here we go. We've got Zotero over here. I've downloaded it. I really like it. This is my Zotero file. One thing you have to do is sync your desktop to the web version. You do that by going into edit, going to preferences and go in sync. So if you're not synced, you'll have a login here. You can see I've logged in and I can unlink my account if I want. But then I've got all of my Zotero files on my desktop and online. Because when you go to research rabbit and you go to this button right at the very beginning, and it says import Zotero collection, you need to log in first of all. And once you've logged into your web account, you can then choose a Zotero collection to sync with Research Rabbit. Here you can see I've got one here. It's got 10 items in it and it says already in sync. So when you add stuff to that um, collection, it will also sync it across to Zotero, which I really, really like. So you'll see that you can add stuff in here. For example, I've just added this one. You just saw me do it because this isn't my paper, but I clicked in add to collection and it syncs back to my Zotero, which means then I can use that to um, reference later on in my thesis or in my uh, uh, dissertation, whatever I'm doing, or my literature review, which is very important. So that's how you use it. Now, um, you can also see down here that I've got resync with Zotero. So that means that this collection, my papers, is all synced up and I can resync it at any time. And then I've got connections. Click to hide. So that's all of the stuff in here, you can see I've got a little cluster of work here. This one's an outlier, so it's not actually linking to anything, which is true because this was sort of like a paper that I published with a friend. So I've got no friends. Oh that's completely outside of my normal research field, so that's not linked at all. Here's a little collection here, and overall, um, yeah, it's just a really great way to uh, just see the links between stuff you've already got rather than going out and finding more links. So connections, click to hide that one. And then once again, we just go through and click all this. I'm gonna look at suggested authors. Brilliant, let's look at Warwick Belcher. He was my supervisor. Let's see what Warwick's been up to. That's it, That okay. I, I wanted to click on to see his publications, but that's, oh, published work, there we are. This is what we do, published work down here. And then we can see all of the stuff, hopefully, from Warwick Belcher, there he is. And there's all his published stuff, a nice little collection. There's my papers. There's some other papers that I've got in this collection. There we are. So it's just so easy to go out and find all of these different papers and importantly, link it back to your reference manager, in this case, Zotero. If you're on the fence about whether or not to use Zotero or Mendeley, I highly recommend you try Zotero first because in my experience using all of the different AI tools, they have better connection to it than Mendeley. And also if you like this video, remember to go check out my course, which is about how to create an academic writing toolkit for you, which means that you can create a really powerful toolkit that allows you to write, allows you to search, allows you to multi-document chat, and it's all in there, and uh, it's for a special price at the moment, so go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. But 
a lot of people ask me, what's the difference between Research Rabbit and something like Connected Papers? Well, let's go on to Connected Papers. So you've seen Research Rabbit. It's a really fantastic tool, syncs lovely with Zotero, and this is Connected Papers. Well, I've started searching, but let's go back. When you log in, you'll see that, first of all, they have a pricing structure. So it only allows you five graphs per month, unlike Research Rabbit, which is apparently free forever. Go check out this, scroll, scroll, scroll. Free forever for researchers. If you don't love that, you don't love much, do you? So connected papers, um, you only get five graphs, but for most people, that's probably enough. Uh, I'd argue that uh, it should be a little bit more. They're being a bit cheeky by only giving you five. But let's have a look, once you're in, you just sort of like search here for keywords, DOI or other identifier. I'm gonna search for my surname just because I'm that sort of person and dialogues on causation with Stapleton. I don't know why that is, but let's do it. So we end up with this graph and you can see it's very, very similar to um, that of Research Rabbit, but it's not interactive and uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit more static which in some ways makes it less confusing, in other ways it just makes it less user friendly. But I use connected papers mainly for this, prior works and derivative works. I think it gives it a little bit clearer and a bit nicer than something like Research Rabbit, but it doesn't have the powerful sort of action of being able to link it to your Zotero and collect stuff. So I only use this for exploratory stuff and really this, derivative work and prior works. I've never really used it for anything else. It's just these two buttons up here. I wish that they would sort of like add a few more features, but in that sense, Research Rabbit does everything you really need it to do in terms of connecting with your Zotero, being able to search, integrate with um, uh, your own research, create collections, create um, categories. It's just a lot more powerful and this workflow of things popping out can get a little bit confusing. Like you can see this is this one and you're like, well, what did I do? What did I click on? Um, and to start all over again, all we need to do is click on a few of these and yeah, start again. You can see I've selected nine papers, then I've got similar works, earlier works and all that sort of stuff. And then we can continue that workflow, that cascade out. Um, until we find what we want. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how to write an exceptional literature review using AI tools. You get my complete workflow. It's really powerful. Go check it out.